What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another Adobe Live. I hope y'all are doing well. My name is Idara Ekpo. I'm going to be your host for today. And we are joined by Winnie Lau. Winnie, how are you today? I am good. You know, it's Wednesday, so it's always yes. that middle of the week. The hump day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Really excited for today and really excited to have all of y'all joining us. If you are in the chat, go ahead and drop where you are joining us from. I always love to interact with y'all. If you have any questions, whether you are joining us from YouTube or you are here on Behance, go ahead and drop any questions that you have. Talk to us. We love to make sure this is as communicative as communicative is not a word. (laughs) We got you though. You got me. (laughs) Um, just making sure that we communicate with each other so that way any questions you all have, it's answered throughout the live. And as always, thank you so much for joining us on Adobe Live. And they want to make sure that you guys join the Adobe Live community. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so that way you can be updated with all of our lives and other aspects that we have. And make sure that you follow us on Instagram at Adobe Live um, for the latest streams, updates, and more. So awesome. Winnie, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back to you for a quick introduction and tell us a little bit about yourself as well as what we are going to be planning to learn about today. Yeah. um, So hi, everyone. My name is Winnie. I'm a photographer based right in New York. As you can kind of tell from my portfolio, I do a lot of product photography, still life, and a bit of lifestyle. Today, we're going to be working more on the still life side, and we're going to be showcasing a personal project of mine. Um, And in terms of just like our process, what we're going to be learning today, we're going to be going into Lightroom, just doing some fine color tuning as well as like color adjustments, and then heading over into Photoshop where we'll do more of the detailing, I call mm. it that, <laughs> and creating some stop motions with uh, Photoshop. Oh, I'm so excited. Awesome. So like I mentioned before, if y'all have any questions, drop them in the chat and that way I will make sure I ask Winnie all throughout the life. Yeah. Let's get started. Let's get started. All right. Um, I kind of want to just do a little backstory about the project first before. So it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, This is a personal project that I did in honor of my wedding from last month. Um, My husband and I got married in a movie theater. So you'll see a lot of that. Like, thank you. (laughs) You'll see a lot of that kind of theme throughout um, the uh, photography. And I knew Mm -hmm. I wanted to capture a still life project, kind of like a merge between my personal world Mm -hmm. and also my photography world. Um, And I'm going to take you guys behind the scene, my thought process and with the photography related and also um, how how I use Lightroom. Mm Because I use Lightroom a lot of times as photo organization. And so I, you know grab your SD card, I load it in, and I kind of make my photo selects from here. And my thought process with the first photo is you can kind of tell, like I kind of lay down some of similar patterns of Mm -hmm. similar, of like kind of like our rough draft of our thought uh, process behind, instead of uh, behind like uh, what happened in our wedding Mm -hmm. and laying it as like a flat lay overhead Mm -hmm. and we kind of did it like first as a kind of like vertical shots in a way like vertical horizontal and realize that as we're kind of going through it we kind of like this diagonal look and then Mm -hmm. um here i will kind of showcase the vision that we had the day of the shoot so i'm going to click on d to go on the develop page in which we'll start kind of cropping things in and I'm going to focus a lot on square aspects so that we don't get a lot of the, you know, left and right where you see mm-hmm. a lot of empty negative spaces. We're just going to hone it in a little bit on the details of the actual photography here. Mm-hmm. So maybe somewhere like this. And and as I was working on my prop slides, this is really just like a rough draft, right? We're going, what we're going to do now is just shift and go through all of the images in that same series. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to sync and I'm going to prop everything in the same way. So I know that it's consistent throughout. So I'm going to synchronize it. And bam. uh, Yeah, bam. And then everything's (laughs) kind of looking the same here. You can kind of tell we were playing with the colors, see what we're feeling, um, what kind of makes sense with just the color feel to it. As Mm -hmm. you can tell, we're really sticking with like a red and yellow coloring. Yeah, here we go. It's a little slow, but no worries. We kind of ended up 
here. This is kind of where we were very happy. Um, Charlotte, who's the prop stylist I worked with, uh, we were kind of laying everything down. We wanted to create like these long shadows so that it kind of create, you can tell like it creates depth. Mm -hmm. as well as laying down um, this like rough draft looking name and as well as this kind of like idea that we had of what we wanted to do our uh, tables instead of table numbers. Mm. And this is kind of like what it'll look like afterwards. Uh, so this is kind of what it looks like uh, when we printed everything and we're setting on the table. Oh. So yeah I think it's um it's so in this case I'm going to do a stop motion mm -hmm. I'm going to showcase a stop motion where we'll see the before and after uh we'll see the before of you know our rough draft of what we wanted to envision and mm. what it looks like coming to life yeah um so I'm going to take this into Photoshop, but first let me kind of show you my Lightroom adjustments here. So I always have a preset kind of set up because I know myself and I know how I shoot and I always underexpose. So I always brighten it up a little bit, lower the highlights a little, up the shadows, um, bringing in some clarity because we want that crisp. We want crisp. it to be sharpened. Yes. Uh, upping the colors because what is a photo without some... <laughs> vibrancy yes. <laughs> <laughs> as well as just creating kind of like a beautiful s curve to kind of mute the blacks a little bit to create like um so it's not too stark mm -hmm. um i usually don't do anything here because i'm going to bring it to photoshop so i can focus on the color adjustments Absolutely. so yeah we're going to take this what i'm going to do is work on this image right here first and add on the second image as a layer mm -hmm. and to make adjustments from there. Let's bring it in. So what I'm gonna do is a control click and I'm gonna edit it right in Adobe Photoshop. Most update version, 2023. Yes. All right, let's load it up, All right, yeah. here we go. Ah, so you can kind of tell, kind of load into Photoshop right here. Um, so in terms of coloring and just my thought process and like any detail editing I want to do, first things first, you can kind of tell here, we probably want to clean this up right over mm -hmm. here because it's not red all the way. Um, and then I do as much as I, this red to me is not the right color red that I was dreaming of. I really wanted this like darker brick red. That's mm -hmm. kind of like a nod to, um, like the, the the like the Chinese red envelopes that we mm -hmm. use a lot, and so what I wanted to do is bring in um, color adjustments so that I can kind of make it the red color that I want. I feel like colors in real life never ends up looking like the colors that we want to see. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I feel like I'm I'm the same way when I I my workflow is very similar where I come into Photoshop to do all of my color adjustments and I'll think the I'll like see what it looks like in real life and then I'll shoot it and I'm like yeah no <laughs> <laughs> no exactly and then I think that's the beauty of having Photoshop yep. and Lightroom is then you can color tune in later exactly. you know the classic you know we'll we'll do it in post we'll do it in post <laughs> don't so stress about tell. it exactly uh this, here I am just cleaning things up with our favorite clone stamp tool yep. and you can tell the blocks that we kind of use were a little on the dirty side. So let's mm -hmm. clean that up a little bit. Yeah. Just kind of focus on a little bit of details here. Right there as well. Just clean that up a little. Nice and easy. Our Super favorite tool. Favorite tool. <laughs> I think I made it worse. Oops, Ooh. I made it worse. When in doubt, the sample doesn't work, just clean it up again. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's cleaned up a little bit. There's a lot of probably a little detailing here. Mm -hmm. This paper has gone through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I love that. Um, I love that. I'm really excited to see what this comes, how this looks at the end, because I love showing that whole process. Like, yeah, it's come through. The paper's gone through a lot, but it just shows like all the planning that went into it. You know, the paper's a little wrinkled. There might be some erasing that was done too. Yeah. But it, it, it really tells that overall story of how you planned and got to the point of your final product and how no. you brought your vision to life. 
Exactly, exactly. And I think that's like the important part about a personal mm-hmm. project um, is not only showcasing the final results, but also showcasing like the process throughout. Absolutely. All right. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy with this clean. It's a really, really quick clean. Um, I think on set, we were just trying to make mm-hmm. sure that we cleaned up everything as much as we can. So let's talk about the color correction. So yes. what I'm going to do is bring... So I have this uh, Adobe Stock image that I pulled. And what I love about this um, are the colors. And I think these are, this is a true color that I would see a lot mm-hmm. in... Uh, Chinese culture and I'm purely using this as a reference I'm not using it in any capacity to um is to to use it in the photo Mm -hmm. I'm just going to use it more as a color reference so we kind of have that here so I'm just going to use that just that and write color reference and then just so I don't forget later I am the worst at naming yeah. my layers. <laughs> it's so funny because every time I do a live, whoever it doesn't matter who I'm hosting with or whether or not I'm the guest, it's always like the one thing to be like, oh, wait, let me name my layers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And I actually, the last Adobe Live I did, um, Aaron taught me like such a great trick. And mm. what he'll do is group everything together. Smart. So that you, when you reference it later, because when you're doing revisions, you're going through so many revisions yeah. that it makes sense to at least give it a, a name. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> hey, so the way that I adjust colors a lot in Photoshop, especially when it comes to matching colors, is I use curves tool a lot, mm. which I, I know a lot of my friends use uh, hue saturation, also a great way as well. Mm. I found this to be very successful. Mm. What I'll do here is the color sampler tool. And what will references uh we'll click on this red because this is the red color that I want the background to look like and then so that's one you can kind of see it right over here Mm -hmm. these are the red green and blues that it is referenced and then I'll pop over to the color the red that I want to change and then you'll see over here um this is the color that I want to change and we'll actually focus on this column right here and we'll focus on this color, this column as the adjustment where I'll kind of hop into, um, we'll change the red, green, blues. That's that's really the goal. Yep. <laughs> and right over here, as you can tell, it is our the color that we want to adjust to is at 119. Mm-hmm. Here's 160. So let's kind of lower the red a little bit so that it matches that. And you can kind of tell that our reference color is also adjusting Mm -hmm. and, but however, the, this color is staying the same. Yeah, exactly. So we don't have to worry about it. Um, You know, we don't have to worry about this color looking wrong Mm -hmm. because we're just looking at numbers right here. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I feel like numbers are always safe. Um, (laughs) I love this as an option to. Yeah. This, is, this is something that I am I hope that y'all are taking snippets and putting them into your toolbox because I'm taking this as um, a way to adjust color because usually what I'll do is either it's the hue saturation like you mentioned or I do um, is it color selection um, in Photoshop that's the layer I usually that's the layer adjustment layer I usually utilize and just yeah. go into the red orange and adjust the colors that needs be but this is a really really incredible tip as well. Yeah. And, and then of course, um, uh, and then at, when we're finished adjusting each mm-hmm. color, you know, every uh, the red, green, and the blue, and then uh, numbers are close or they match this column, that column to me, I'm like, okay, then this red is going to match this red. Exactly. I usually do a gut check and I'll move it up the layer and you can kind of tell that it's yeah. pretty close yeah. and it's closer to the red that I wanted mm-hmm. than that orange kind of look. You had, yes, of course. So I'm going to turn off this layer for a second, just so that I can kind of focus on this curse layer, the color adjustment that I just made. And I'm going to mask the area that I want. As you can tell, I've kind of, um, you know, mm-hmm. there's some hints of, you know, red, green, and blue in these areas. So you yeah. can tell that that color adjusted as well too. So let's, let's, uh, let's adjust it there. Uh, So what I'll do is just Command-I to just invert it really quickly. Mm -hmm. 
then I am going to use the selection tool and just kind of highlight the red area that I want to see change. And I do want the sh uh, shadow to also mm -hmm. adjust as well so that the the darkness also matches the darkness yes. of the red. And yep. now that I've uh, highlighted and I've selected that area, I'm just going to do another command I. So then now Bingo. it adjusted and it's the Yay. color red that I wanted. Um, and what I'm going to do is just uh, command D to just deselect um, mm -hmm. that area. And yeah, so they can kind of tell it's like the red hue that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to adjust the yellow. So that's the next thing that I'm going to personally do. Same thing. Sometimes it's easier for me to turn off that red layer. Mm -hmm. Just get it. Don't forget to label. The label. <laughs> I'm going to, I or else I'll just go through it and I keep, you know, clicking on yeah, the. Like, um... It's like, wh what is it? Oh, what is it adjusting? <laughs> oh, okay. That's the red. <laughs> exactly. It's all just yellow right here. Right. And we're going to do the same thing where, oh, first things first, got to make sure I'm in the right button. I'll click on this to just shift it over to the yellow a little mm -hmm. bit. So it should be around like right there. And I'll move this over here because that's the yellow that I want to adjust so that it's more of a golden yellow than it is a cooler yellow yes. that I see on my screen. And same thing. Let's adjust the curves one more time. Uh, right here. I'll lift the reds up. Nope, I'll lower it. Wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> and I noticed that you're pulling, when you're making that these adjustments, you're pulling from the center of the curve. Opposed yes. to the other, whether it's the top, the bottom point, you're pulling from the center. Yeah, that is a very good point um, that I forgot to mention. It's always around the center because you want mm -hmm. that full colors to adjust. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. And same thing with the blue. The blue's pretty close, I would say. Kind of match it there. And you can tell it's a little bit red. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty red over here as well, too. So let's close that. I'm going to close this so I can see the full screen. And I'm going to close the color offers as well so that I can just mask this. Just mm -hmm. invert it. Same thing, going to selection. Just highly yellow. Alternatively, I've also done it where I've used select color range. Mm. So let me just show that. So let's do command D. I've unselected. Going to select. Going to color range. Clicking on. Mm. Making sure I'm adding. Clicking on all the yellows that I want to adjust. And less fuzzy. And then I kind of play with it a little bit. Nope. <laughs> Perfect. Just adding in all of the mm -hmm. yellows that I want to cover. You can tell that it's grabbing some of the yellow yeah. on the invitation, but that's okay because we can adjust it also later. Okay, great. Just showing an alternative way. Either yes. way works. So I'm going to press okay. And oh, my bad. I should have done it right on here, not on that. No, I should have done it inverting Hmm. We'll troubleshoot together a little bit. <laughs> Let's try one more time. Yeah, see, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'll just invert it. Mm. it. Nope, that's the wrong way. Oh, that okay. is this is the right way. That looks good. You can always just press the slash so we can kind of see what's covering, what's not. Yep. Always so tricky because um the background is always red. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Taking a look just to make sure. Zooming in a little bit. That, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. It looks like it looked like it grabbed the the yellow very very well. Yeah, I will admit this is a little red than I want. Yes. Um, what I'll do there is actually just lightly paint it. Mm. Paint what I do. Do do do. It's just making sure that we grab a little bit. Just making sure this is fully black. And then I'll just kind of lower the opacity to 20. Zooming in a little bit and just making sure that mm. the yellow changes, but not all the way. Mm -hmm. 
We'll do one more time just to kind of get that right here, making sure that the brush is at like 0% so that it's not too harsh of a line. Yeah. And then there, yeah. And then that's the color change. Really liking it. Oh, I think beautiful. It's like, yeah, it's kind of the vibe I'm going for. And the next thing I'll kind of do is just making sure these pencils uh, are dark enough. So we'll go mm. here, click on black, kind of darken it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Same thing, command I, where I invert it and I select the areas that I want to adjust. I pressed on five so that I can adjust the opacity a little mm -hmm. bit. And I'm just hovering, just going over the areas that I want just a little bit more want that, the... that black to pop a bit more exactly yeah. letting it pop a bit and then i'm going to use my curves to just kind of brighten up this area just feels a little dark to me the light mm -hmm. probably just didn't hit it as we mm -hmm. were shooting same thing command i and just hovering over that area a little bit just to brighten it up Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, this definitely feels a little brighter. Yeah, this is really nice. Yeah, looks good. All right, so then that's the first part of it. So we got this image down. So let's add on the other image that I mentioned that's part of the stop motion. Perfect. So let's save it. Yes, please save it. <laughs> <laughs> save it, save it, save it. And then as always, if y'all have any questions about anything we've done thus far, or um, anything throughout the live, feel free to drop your questions in the chat. Cool, cool. All right, let's go back to Lightroom. Perfect. All right, cool. So you can kind of see what I like about Lightroom is it immediately saves, saves it yes. onto the library so I can mm -hmm. reference it later. And you can kind of tell this is the, no, that's not oh. before. This is the after. This is the before. So mm -hmm. it's more in line what I'm thinking of. We're not going to do the same to this image. In fact, we're what we're going to mm. do now is uh, I personally, when I work on stop motions, I always export them first and then I load them into Photoshop and okay. I create the layers from there. Mm -hmm. And this will be the base image. This is the image that we're going to be working with. And the only thing we'll adjust is this part. As you can as, as you can tell, that's the only thing that has changed between mm -hmm. the images. So let me export them. So... What got you, as far as um, your photography journey... How did you get into a space of shooting flat lays? Is this where you started? Was this somewhere along your journey that you were just like, a, a, it became an interest of yours? Just, I'm always curious to see how people got to where they are. Yeah, I, um, I actually started shooting flat lays during the pandemic. Oh, I think wow. because I was shooting a lot of people, shooting a lot of fitness. And it was just, I was just in a place where, um, uh, I was in a place where I couldn't shoot any people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the hardest yeah. part was, uh, yeah, the hardest part was like, what do I do with photography wise? And that took me, gave me a moment to really, um, think about, uh, lighting and think about, you know, I got my strobes that year, 2020, mm -hmm. and I started shooting right behind me in this dresser <laughs> right there in my tiny little space uh yeah and it was great uh and that's how i got into it so oh, i'm gonna close yeah i'm gonna close this photoshop file i what i'm gonna do is go to files go to script i'm gonna load files into stack and i'm going to go and load the images here so i save them right here in final mm -hmm. edits. So I'll just pop it in, we can change that later. So you kind of tell I did pixels as uh, 2000 by 2000, but what we could adjust is, um, it doesn't have to be a big file because we don't want it to compress as we're working mm -hmm. on the stop motion. That's one thing I've kind of learned in like past edits as I make stop motions is to be careful that it's not too big of a file or mm -hmm. else when you upload it to websites or you upload it to Instagram, the file are too big and mm -hmm. they compress it. 
So let's open it up and I'm going to, and quick tip is click on this, just making sure that aligns a little bit as, as long as you have things on a tripod, you should be fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, great, great, great. So we have these two layers, as you can tell, this is going to be, this is going to be our base layer. So I'm just going to write base layer and I'm going to write new layer right here. And I'm going to switch them. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, I'll show you guys later. So let's go to window and timeline. This is kind of where we'll create the frame animation. We're going to do the stop motion here. And we're, so there are two options, usually video timeline frame an, or frame animation. We're going to do frame animation. So then from there, what we're going to do is just making sure, well, I'm actually going to create a couple layers. And okay. let's see what happens. Let's click on a couple layers. Perfect. I think this is like a good amount, not too many. That's mm -hmm. perfect. And I'm going to create frames from layers. So we should have five separate frames and each frame will be a moment in the stop motion. As we know, like stop motion is just a series mm -hmm. of photos together. And um, so the more frames you have, the more seamless it kind of looks. Mm -hmm. It looks more like a video. But for just demonstration purpose, we're just going to do the five. And what we'll do is this is our base. And as you can, so the way we're going to go about it is we're going to have this area change into from our rough draft of our concept into the final look okay so what we're gonna do here is we're going to this is like the base so this is good we're golden this looks perfect we're going to the next frame and what i because i only want to change where it says myers we're going to mask out completely mm. and when we do invert the mask there's no other layer underneath it. So we want to turn on the base layer where we had Shyamalan mm -hmm. um, first. And then what we're going to do is we're going to color in. I always say color in. I know that's not the right term. <laughs> <laughs> I've, and we're just going to do a little. I did not know you could do this. Yeah. And it's really fun because then you're, it's still the similar like Photoshop mentality, yeah. but a little different. So we're going to, oops, because we're at 20% uh, 20 opacity. We're going to do 100 because mm -hmm. we want to see the full yeah, scope. going to paint in that entire. Yes. Perfect. We're just going to do a little bit, just a little bit. Mm. But I do want to clean it up because, as you can tell, there's a bit of yellow, yellow. that's popping in. Yes. So I'm going to do this so we can kind of see what we're working with. And I'm going to go kind of and I go around here. Oops. Here we go. Perfect. Something like that. And I'm going to invert because now I can work on this area. Mm -hmm. And I'll just paint that back in. Paint it back in. Perfect. And then Command Z. And we're going to look at that layer together. As you can tell, we still see. Shyamalan. Um, we see a bit of the piece from before, so let's clean that up a little bit. Maybe I'll keep that actually. We'll invert it mm. again so that you can kind of see it. We'll get a sample of the color around it. Oops. Hmm, let's see. I'm actually going to create a new layer right here. Let me see. Am I not editing on the right layer? Let's see. Oh, no, I'm not editing the right layer. Let's invert it again. So what happened was I wasn't editing mm. on the outside. You, you, were still on the, you were still on the ticket. I was still on the ticket. Sometimes you can't get it right the first time. Just try yeah, again. Just try again. 
Yeah. So that's kind of where we're at. I'm going to deselect again. I'm going to hop over into the next layer. Perfect. We're going to. So next layer, same thing. It's back again. We're literally mm -hmm. going to do the same thing multiple times together. <laughs> <laughs> I think with stop motion, a lot of it is uh, repetitive because mm -hmm. you want it to look really clean. You want it to look like it is, um, it's, uh, it's like seamless. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see. Let's do that. And then uh, what we're going to do is mask again. Invert it, bring in the base layer back. The beauty of the fact that we just did what we did is we're going to take this mask Ooh. from the last layer, bring Got it in. It. I'm actually going to bring this all the way up here and turn it on. So now it applies for all of it. All of them. Yes. And, and what we're going to do right now is grab another brush and just maybe I'll lower it a bit so it's not too intense. And just go over it. Oops, the other way. I'm on the wrong. I'm should I should be on the mask. Let's see. Perfect. And just brush over here. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Also making sure the yellow's okay. Same yes. thing. Do that. I'm going to mask it out. Inverse it again. Then clean up the yellow. Clean up the yellow. Perfect. Deselect again. Go back into mode. And that's our next layer. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of tell it's like slow. Ha. Uh oh. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, I see what happened. So I am going to do this. Let's see option bring it back down so i accidentally got rid of the layer yeah. from before the mass mm -hmm. so we're just going to do this and we're just going to just... yeah there we go nice so it's here then we're here then we're there mm. Ta -ta! <laughs> lovely all right two more times we got this <laughs> So you create the new mask and then you'll drag the mask from previously, add it there and just pick up and tee where you were, where you left. Yes, off. exactly. So it's a lot of repetition. <laughs> it's a lot of repetition. Another way we could have done it, um, my, my assistant that was helping me on set brought up a really cool concept was we could have ripped it. We could have ripped oh. each piece one by one, just take a photo and then just put it all together. Um, that's so that's another alternative way mm -hmm. that we could have done the literally same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it, and like, I think that's the beauty of, you know, um, photography is there's so many ways mm -hmm. to get the same result. Absolutely. <laughs> there's no like 100% correct way. It's just whatever way works best for you. Exactly. Really, that's all it is. I'm going to go a little further in this one. Same thing. Let's see where we are. Yeah, and there's no one right way to do mm -hmm. it, like you Not mentioned. I'm sure there's another way we could have done the same thing in Photoshop here. But... Yep. <laughs> All right, same thing. Making sure that the color stays, that we're only affecting the ticket area. Mm -hmm. Oops. Lovely. Looks good. Let's see how it looks. I always kind of like want to see the progress mm -hmm. as we're kind of going. And this is the last one. So same thing, I'm going to invert the mask, bring in the base layer, and we are going to color in, color in that entire ticket. Yes. And super cool because when you kind of look at it, it's exactly how we envisioned it. Mm -hmm. in a, and we use Illustrator to create this, actually. Oh, wow. Shout out to Adobe. <laughs> <laughs> Right. same thing I highlight this area no it's really it's really incredible to see like the concept and how it came to life how many after you how many drafts did you do feel like you guys went through of creating this one specific aspect was it just kind of like you already envisioned it you wrote it out and you're like okay you drew it out and you're like okay this is it 
or did you go through a couple of different drafts to kind of decide? Yeah, yeah. we definitely went through a couple of drafts mm-hmm. and we went through a lot of arguments <laughs> <laughs> about what we wanted to look like or whose name comes mm-hmm. first. <laughs> uh, but I think at the end, we knew that we wanted to focus on the names and we wanted mm-hmm. to highlight like uh, the um, movies that mm-hmm. they worked on. So, I mean, Nancy Myers, like fabulous. She did like Parent Trap and mm-hmm. Holiday, all the rom coms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Control T. Right. And then this is what it's going to look like. So, this is going to go by really fast, but what we want to do is adjust that so that it's more yes. not crazy, not as wild. Mm-hmm. And I think about point 2 is a, is pretty good, pretty mm-hmm. fast, and we want it to kind of hold on the last frame a little longer mm-hmm. just so we kind of say, "Here's the final piece." Mm-hmm. So, we'll put it for 1 second. Oh, no. I'll just go. I'll just keep going in a loop. Forever and ever. And ever and ever and ever. <laughs> and that's the gif. So, oh, bad habit. Always save. Always yes, save. Yes, always save. Yes. Okay. But just save. Do you incorporate stop motions like this um, just in your flat lays or would you do this for any other type of work that you shoot just to? Uh, stop motions you? really is a great way to integrate motion. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it's a, I think instead of diving into full motion completely, it's a mm. little bit of like an in-between stop. Yeah. And, and, and with, even when I used to do a lot more fitness work and, um, fitness photography, mm-hmm. a lot of my clients were yoga instructors. So mm-hmm. I would ask them like, Hey, do this movement and I'm going to capture it in a stop motion format. And it was so useful for them to put it on their website as a gif because you get to see it without integrating motion, like actual um, cap motion into it. Yeah. And, but the message is still there and you can mm-hmm. add it to newsletters and it's easy to use that way. Um, so me- stop motion is so great for so many uses. I always mm-hmm. think about how things are moving mm-hmm. and how I can capture that in the photography mm-hmm. way. Oh, I but, love. Yeah, so I'm just going to put a oh, one stop motion. <laughs> 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 Not as a PDF, <laughs> as a Photoshop, Photoshop file. <laughs> there we go. Save it. Save, guys. All right. File. We're going to export it now. So the way we're kind of going to do this is let's export it as a... Jeff file. Is that export as? Actually, I don't think that's right. It's file, export, save for web. Save for web, yes. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So I personally love 1080 as like a good mm-hmm. sweet spot for web use. I think that's a, or 720. I know it sounds so small, but mm-hmm. I promise it looks really good. Mm-hmm. And it goes on forever. That's how we're going to loop it. We're going to save this as well. Stop. And we're just going to have it as Adobe O1 stop motion. Lovely. Saving it. It Our takes first a little one while. Is complete. Yeah, really excited. And then we'll see how it turns out. So you can kind of tell oh, right I in love. this little preview that I can't make bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love there it. I think it, stop motion is just definitely, like you mentioned before, it's a great way to introduce motion into your work. And also it's just a creative way to show your work in general. So this is really, really creative yeah. how you show that before and after. Yeah. It's a great way to show before and afters as well, just as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. So mm, close that actually. And then saving this. Let's close that. It didn't save. So I'll save it like that. We're going to go back into Lightroom for a little bit. And that was the first image. And a lot of times it takes me about like 20 or 30 minutes to get like the first set done. Mm-hmm. And and then from there, um, we get the first image for stop motion. We're going to continue down. And this is kind of like my thought process with my um, prop stylist. I was like, oh, I really want to do this layer look. I want to showcase 
some of the jewelry that my mom gave me for the wedding mm. and a nod to just like my heritage of uh, my Chinese heritage. But we didn't like the way it looked as a flat lay. And that's okay mm. because let's take a step back. Let's think about how we want to showcase it. And so um, Charlotte had these beautiful blocks. So oh, we decided wow. to hang it. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Uh, and she taped it and she <laughs> made it happen. I love seeing behind the scenes to see what like, how, what, do, what, do, what, do, what did everybody do to bring this Ex together? Exactly. And it took us like a good half hour wow. and to an hour to really be happy with how it looks. And then as she was building this, I was like, wait, let me get some lighting in because I really mm -hmm. want to showcase the ranunculuses. Yes. And I want to make sure those were the flowers we also had at our wedding. And I want to make sure oh. that they are well lit and they're bright. Mm -hmm. And as much as we're focused on the jewelry pieces, uh, we also want to showcase the beautiful flowers. So yes, I got like beautiful. a Yeah, we got a snoop. We kind of highlight it. And then we're kind of showcasing it here. So I think around here is when um, we kind of knew the direction of where we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. We wanted to create this like flower garden with like the centerpieces right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I could have come real, a lot closer, but I decided I was going to crop it in post. Mm -hmm. Same thing. We'll do a square crop. We'll go even tighter with the cropping a little bit. Yeah. And we'll nail it right here. And that is oh, very close to the final image. <laughs> that is so stunning. Same thing here. We're going to press shift and click to the end, sync and synchronize mm -hmm. so that we are in, so that all the images that, you know, we had, we had it on a tripod. Mm -hmm. So that we know that as Charlotte is going through the propping, it doesn't change doesn't, in yeah, the photos. Changes. Yes, of course. Which is also very key in stop motions is to have a tripod. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I already gone through everything and I've kind of selected my favorite flower arrangement and what I and what I want to adjust. So we're actually going to be compositing two images together to get our final image. And then tentatively, we can do a stop motion after. I'm all about okay. the stop motions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so right here, we have this image where I love the flower arrangement, but I notice that there's a bit of shadow mm -hmm. on the jewelry piece. And that's not ideal. You know, we want I want to be able to showcase what my mom gave me. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the next image where I believe Charlotte cut. She cut one of the... Mm -hmm the flowers for me because that's what was creating the shadow and I'm going to pull this into this photo mm -hmm. to create that beautiful look so let's load it into photoshop photoshop awesome and as we continue I'm trying to make sure I'm not missing anything in the chat I think so far we are getting a lot of great Feedback, Winnie. Um, everyone's loving the points that we're making, really loving how the um, first stop motion came together as well. So that's yeah. some good news. Yeah. First, if anyone has any questions, let yes. me know any as we're questions? going through. Okay, so we have this image that we were working mm -hmm. with earlier with the shadow that we don't want. So we're mm -hmm. going to pull from here. We're going to do a control click, duplicate layer onto that first image mm -hmm. and really here um we're gonna it creates another layer on this first image so we're gonna go here and we're just gonna write no shadow <laughs> <laughs> make sure to label your layers and we're going to invert because really we don't need the whole thing yeah, all we, we really need mean. is that little piece so yeah. we're gonna, since it was on a tripod it should line up perfectly beautiful lovely Perfect. And then you can tell there's some flowers from before that are peeping in. Mm -hmm. And I just take those out. Goodbye. <laughs> Lovely. You can kind of tell there's a little bit of a shift. Yeah, this is small. Yeah. That's when I will zoom in to just really focus on that. Potentially, we could just 
move the layer mm -hmm. as well as adjusting it. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's really nice. It looks good. And then we'll zoom out. You can't even tell. Mm -mm. Yep, Perfect. you can't even tell. That looks good. Perfect. So now what we're going to do next is always cleaning up the image. And I always go in and, you know, you can kind of tell that maybe the board wasn't straight. Mm -hmm. So it's a little slanted and we'll just have to clean it up. So we can always use clone or we can use healing. Either one will get us the same results here. Same thing over here. Just clean that up a little bit. Cool. Love the Rhinonculus. It's great. I just really love, I think what I love about personal projects is just how you're able to pull together aspects that mean so much to you, that are significant to you and your story and bring yeah. them into such a beautiful image. So I'm really loving all of the different aspects from the first stop motion that we did. And then also this image of the jewelry that your mom gave you, the, oh, the florals. You. It's just so, oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. And that's the beauty of a personal project. It's a yeah. story that I really wanted to share. I wanted mm -hmm. to merge both of my worlds. Mm -hmm. um, I even told my wedding photographer about it. I was like, I'm going to do oh. a still life project all about, on it, you know? Uh, and I think mainly, and I and I, I know a lot of people have a lot of uh, beautiful mm -hmm. heirlooms or beautiful uh, personal items that they bring out for their weddings. And mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to showcase this in honor of my family. I love it. I really do. And then uh, this is where I think we use healing so that we can kind of get rid of that harsh mm -hmm. line a little bit kind of fades in a little bit like a little bit blur let's see what else i do feel like these are a bit um blown out mm -hmm. um especially up here so i'm just gonna bring it back you can tell the, it's a little soft too uh, i'm gonna use curves to kind of fix that a little mm -hmm. bit same thing um command i to inverse We're just going to go in and just bring back some of that detail. I think that's the hardest when shooting light things on mm -hmm. light, on like a, yes. a lighter background. Just keeping all those 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 details and not making sure that nothing is overexposed or lost. Yeah, exactly. It's a little blown out in some parts. That's my fault. Like, but right I also here. feel like it doesn't take away from the overall. I agree. I agree. I'm going to do the same thing and adjust the opacity to two so that it's at 20%. And I'm just going to go over certain areas. Okay. Okay. Yep, still going mm -hmm. over the image. And if you're always wondering, okay, is it working? Am I making an impact? I always press the slash mm -hmm. so I can kind of also see, see everything. Yes. And like, okay, yeah, I am making, it is changing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is getting darker. Yeah. Yeah. Especially sometimes our eyes can't um, make those changes out just naturally or with our naked eyes. So it is good to go back and use those tools so that way you can see the impact that you're making. Exactly. And also to see if maybe I accidentally mm -hmm. hit somewhere else that I yep. want to. I love, love these buds that mm -hmm. she included. Absolutely beautiful. She's a natural. So, remind, so, so remind us again who all was included in 
um, part and included and participated in this personal project? Yeah, I so I came in with the idea, obviously, because mm-hmm. it was my own wedding. Of course. Um, as like this is what I was envisioning, and uh, sent a mood board to Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a prop stylist based in New York. And I also asked um, a friend of mine, Amanda, to come and just help me as like a, just like a second eye and just Mm -hmm. help me um, with this photo shoot. Mm -hmm. Um, So great team. There was three of us involved in this and they completely understood like what I was going for and what I wanted to create. Oh, lovely. And I adore that. And so, yeah, great team, great people. And that's like my mentality as well when working on a project is you want to be collaborative with people that Mm -hmm. are in the same energy as you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have this. I love it. I, what I'm going to do is we're going to change that yellow again. So Mm. I'm going to pull up. We're going to grab that stock image again, throw it back in there. We're actually going to make it a little bigger just so I can see the yellow better. Mm -hmm. I'm going to accept it. I'm not going to take it all. I'm only going to include some parts. My opacity always, um, I always forget about Mm -hmm. that. I move that to size so I can see everything. One more time, I'm just going to go over the opacity again. I'm just going to say color reference. Perfect. All right, let's add that curves layer Mm -hmm. for the color adjustment. Again, we're going to go to color sampler tool. We're going to hover over that yellow Yellow. right there. And we're going to hover over this yellow that we want to adjust. We're going to go down red, green, blue one more time. So let's shift that just, as you can tell, pretty Pretty close. close. It's very close. Pretty close. There's barely anything to adjust. (laughs) Just a little more blue in the photo, in the yellow. There you go. All right. I'm going to make that reference disappear. As you can tell, it's affecting all the mm-hmm. whole image changing the layer name again so we're going to invert this time because there's so many little nooks mm-hmm. and there's so many little spaces here i'm going to use the color range tool we're going to go to select That's really color nice. range and we're going to get just only that yellow mm-hmm. And like we mentioned before, there's multiple ways to do things, but sometimes certain methods are more useful depending on the setup. So like I really like that you're using color range here because it's it's quicker and better than trying to use to select that yellow out. Yeah. Like imagine, do you see that spot that is Mm -hmm. trying to capture? It's right here. And that spot is a hint of yellow that I would probably miss. Yep. Granted, the yellow color change is not a lot, so Mm -hmm. we don't have a lot to worry about. Um, but if you were working on another project that requires a huge color shift, then yep. you'll see it. And all right, press OK. And then, all right, yeah. Well, as you can tell, highlighted the areas that we wanted mm-hmm. to adjust. We'll click on the mask and we will control I. And it adjusted Lovely. the background. Perfect. And if you want to see if it actually made a difference, we're going to slash. You can kind of tell that it only adjusted yeah. that yeah. deep yellow color. Absolutely. Ah, so pretty. That looks so good. <laughs> this is so stunning. Yeah. And I think what I want to do here next is um, I, I debated all week if I wanted to change this red. Because mm-hmm. I wanted to keep with the red and yellow theme. You know but what? I. I kind of like it like this. I like it as white. Yeah, I do too. There's just I, something I, about the way it pops and then also the way it sits so well with like the brightness of some of the flowers. It just overall. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I also was like maybe pink and I was like, that doesn't feel quite 
on brand either. Mm-hmm. And I really like this way. And so I think what I'll do is I'll make it even more crisp. Mm, yes. So I use selective color to highlight the whites and just, you can tell because it what it does is just making the whites even more white. Mm-hmm. I'll kind of have it around 30%. Not going to do the whole frame. Just going to do around yep. certain areas. Because as you can tell, the light was hitting from above. Mm-hmm. So here is brighter than it is down here. Down there, yep. So we're going to just do 20% again. Because we can always go over it. Just bring out the white background a bit. We go. Perfect. I mean, let me just do a yeah, you can tell it brightens yeah. it up just a little bit. And same thing like we did before. I always do selective colors white, select colors black, so we can kind of there aren't as much here today. Well, yeah. I'll put it at 20% a little bit invert I'll do it at 30% opacity and just kind of go around certain areas Mm -hmm. and I think it's an alternative to the contrast tool yes I personally um I don't know if this is just me and my workflow but I, I tend to use selective color and go into the blacks and I use that opposed to going into contrast I just like the impact it makes a little bit better but yeah. that's that's my choice of yeah choice of tool. Uh, same, same here. And then mm-hmm. um and then you can always adjust it versus yep. doing the whole image. The whole it's entire a thing. More selective. Exactly. Yeah. Right. This, looks good. this is so beautiful. Perfect. And I'm like, this flower is bugging me here, but I'm gonna keep it there. It's it's, it's a cute one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Um next thing that I I'm going to do, let's see, think about colors. All the colors look good. That looks great. So we're going to save. Yes. <laughs> uh, we're going to close this window. We don't need it. Yeah, this one's saved. There we go. That's perfect. That was good. I want to, so I, we also did like an alternative stop motion where mm. this, this pendant flips oh wow but i I, i'm not sure we actually got it so let's try it together um and i think it's worth the try to see and the way that we kind of captured it in lightroom was it flips so how to show let's see okay so i actually already selected those so i'm gonna i what i do is a one star and i kind of go through it to see so you can kind of tell that it starts to flip a little. Mm-hmm. All right. So what we're going to do with all those, uh, you can tell the flowers shifted a lot, but that's okay because mm-hmm. we're only going to focus on the pendant here. Exactly. Let's see. One of these is the uh, Photoshop file. Here we go. That's the file. So we're going to use this one. No, we're not. We're going to use this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these. All right. Same thing. Going to export them. Perfect. So we're just waiting for it to load. So you export and then you went ahead and imported it into Photoshop to do that stop motion. Mm-hmm, Instead mm-hmm. of just for, okay, perfect. Yeah, and I use JPEGs because I sometimes I work with a uh, hundred frames. Sometimes mm. I've worked with like thirty frames, and PSD files or raw files will mm-hmm. crash. Very true. <laughs> very, very true. <laughs> it will crash. I've learned from experience that it's too much for Photoshop 10, mm-hmm. which is okay because I think JPEG doesn't take away from the information. Mm-hmm. Alternatively, you can always load it in Premiere, Adobe Premiere. I've also done that as well. Okay. And Adobe Premiere handles more uh, larger files better mm-hmm. if you're trying to do a stop motion. So we're going to go back into Photoshop. We're going to... Um, I forgot to export this. So let's export this file as well, too. And that would be the tip file right here. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
this is the base. This is the base that we're going to work with. So mm -hmm. we're going to export it, right click. And then or, I see that the images that you, um, the stop motion, are you thinking that it's going to turn all the way and then show the back of the, of the pendant, or is it just going to turn and then turn back? Um, I think it's going to do a full, it could do a full one, uh, 360. Mm -hmm. Because if you have it as a half turn, you can just mirror it. Mirror it back, yeah. Yeah, and it goes fully back. So both ways can work. You know, it, or you can do a subtle, like it's a wind chime. Mm -hmm. mm, I like you know, that. it's kind of like a like a flipping it, back and forth a bit. Back and forth. That's yeah, there, there, and and I think I think there's many ways to do this as well mm -hmm. too. Um, no one right way, many alternatives. Mm -hmm. All right, same thing. We're gonna load it, load files into stack, browse. We're gonna grab these babies, all of them. Shift. Oh, maybe not. We're gonna come. We're gonna control. <laughs> Command and open. Same thing. Attempt to align. And all right, let it do its magic. Photoshop is thinking. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. Let's see what happened here. I'm gonna go to timeline again. Create frame animation. I'm gonna load all the frames this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can kind of turn. This is the main one we worked with. You yes. can tell because it's a little more blue mm -hmm. than the rest of the images. So that's on top. But like always, I'm going to reverse it and move it to reverse it, move it to the bottom. Let's see what we're working with. Um... Yeah, you can kind of tell it's a little skewed. Let me crop it in a bit more because you can kind of tell okay. there are transparent moments here. Yeah. And we're just going to crop it in a bit for our reference image. Zoom in. What? Does anyone have any questions? I know. You all are a little bit quiet in the chat. If you have any questions, whether you guys are joining us from YouTube or Behance, please do let us know. We are doing a lot of great work with editing flat lay photos. We've talked about um, our color adjustments. We've done some stop motion um, and utilized a number of different tools. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. As always, make sure that you check out Winnie's um, work on Instagram as well as her website. Um, because I think that so far this, your work is just so absolutely incredible. So I'm really excited that you're sharing this with us. Thank you. That's so sweet. Uh, I'm looking at the files that we have and see what we can work with. So this is the, I would say this is the image we want to end up with. So I'm going to mm -hmm. slide it to the end. Lovely. So yeah, this is the image. So we're going to get everything in between. You kind of tell. Let's see. Oh, we do have a question. What's up? Um, do the layers mirror the frames? Not always. They don't, and that's important because here we're creating the order of the animation. Mm -hmm. Here, I would consider them working files, mm. and so they don't. They're not always in the same order. If you move them around, then they're okay. not going to stay in the same order. And I always use this. I think about how Photoshop works for here, like mm -hmm. different layers are, how they're stacked. And here, I just think of them from left to right, the order mm. of motion. Yeah. Beautiful. And then we have another... Question. I actually really like this question as well. Um, how do you typically go about fi figuring out your lighting setup slash goals for a project when shooting? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. For lighting setups, a lot of times I think about what I want to highlight. Mm -hmm. And in this case, I knew I wanted to highlight the jewelry and the flowers. So a lot of times the lighting is set up in a way that it's really, uh, really bright. And I kind of mm -hmm. uh, want to highlight that. So it actually was a little dark, the setup that I had. So I grabbed a snoot so that it mm -hmm. would just focus on 
these particular uh this just just in the center mm -hmm. just to highlight the jewelry because mm -hmm. it was getting a little dark and a little lost um uh, usually it's a debate about soft lighting or harsh lighting. Mm -hmm. That's my debate always mm -hmm. when I start on a project. And then I kind of go from there and figure out uh, if if I prefer soft lighting, I'll adjust it from there. I prefer harsh lighting for this project, I'll adjust it from there. I think I love the way that the shadows look here. Mm -hmm. So I knew I wanted to go with something a little more harsh. Yeah, I was going to ask you what made you decide to go with the harsher lighting for for this project? Yeah. And, and we, and um, I think normally most of my work is a little bit more on the harsh lighting side. Mm -hmm. So it leans also into my own personal taste too. Okay. So that kind of helps. Mm -hmm. And then for the lighting, did you have, um, so now you said, so you had this new, that was directly in front. Did you have a light on above, which is what you mentioned before? Um, what was like the setup of your lights? Yeah, I had, um i had one big diffuse light on mm -hmm. the right okay and it was right next to the camera a little higher then i had one snoot on my left and that's okay. why the lighting is Our kind of the sh side. yeah exactly yeah. the shadows are on this side and i made sure that it was focused right into the mm -hmm. center the issue we had with the lighting and snoot adjusting to the center was you could see it mm. in um, the background because the background was too close. So mm -hmm. we had to shift the background three feet away <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so that the lighting of the snoot wouldn't affect um, the lighting of the background. Makes sense. And then we have yeah. one more question um, about the lighting. Is there a standard amount of light to usually use? Um, I lean on two or three. Mm -hmm. One is one, you know, one a lot of times is going to be the main light. Mm -hmm. And all right, so what I'm doing is actually deleting this frame. <laughs> I've been trying to delete it for a while. <laughs> deleting it. <laughs> there we now, go. It's gone. Gone. Now I can talk. <laughs> um, uh, so a lot of times I, one is the main light. One is going to be the fill light. So mm -hmm. a lot of times, uh, depending on the the light you have, it might not be strong enough. So I always add a second light so that it adds as a fill. Okay. And so if there's any harsh shadows, it kind of fills it in. Literally, mm -hmm. that's the name where it came from. Yep. And a third light is only if I need to light the background. Okay. I think that's where it comes in. Or it's a really, or it's a big set. It's with people. Mm -hmm. That's when I bring in a third or fourth light to really make sure that I, I think I'll, because my work is so bright, it's not moody at all. Mm -hmm. You have to bring in a lot of lights to yeah. support that. I, um, otherwise, it gets too dark and it's not really in line with uh, my personal work. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what I'm going to do here is uh, I kind of created the timeline of the framing a little bit. Just only focus on the pendant, only in the middle. So you can kind of tell it flips and it turns and then bam. Then it's like completely head on here. And this one's a little rough, I would say, but it was a great way to see if it works. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do here is actually I'm going to undo that because I don't know where the pendant is. <laughs> so I'll zoom in a little bit I'll just highlight this thing in the middle almost there right. we'll inverse select that and then deselect that and then inverse it so it's just that bring in the background So what the issue you kind of see here is you can see the back pendant. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is create a copy. I'm actually going to turn this off. The copy will be the base. And I'm going to turn this off for a second. And then I am going to get rid of it completely. Lovely. And we have um, about 17 more minutes, if I'm doing my math right, in this right. live. So oh. 
Thank you all so much for just sticking with us. Again, if you have any questions that you want answered before the live is over, feel free to drop them in the chat. Yes. I feel like the time just flies so quickly. It really does. <laughs> And then I'm gonna bring this layer back. And you're yeah. gonna tell, and we'll just move it until it kind of fits. This one's a little rough. It's mm -hmm. not good. So, bam. And then the next one is this one. Same thing. I'm going to select it. And what I could do if I we had more time was mm -hmm. I can also pencil tool it a little bit. Mm. But for the sake of time, we will just do it this way. And then I'll show this up. Then I'll go to the next layer. Same and repeat. Same, Same and repeat. And repeat. <laughs> Not perfect. When in doubt, control Z. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. I'm really intrigued to see how this comes together. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As you can tell, as we adjust it, it kind of shifts a little bit um, because it's dangling. So mm -hmm. it's not going to stay in the same place. Same so I'm place. always moving it to make sure that always moving it. And then the last frame is this one. Remember we deleted one of the frames, so that's, that's what this mm -hmm. is. I'm going to select this tool again. We're going to unselect the middle one. We don't want that yellow to mm -hmm. pop in. Like I said, we could always use pencil tool for more precision, but we kind of focus on this. Inverse, and we will move this over. Oh, not that image, this image. <laughs> All right, this there will be interesting. Go. We shall see. All right. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, it's too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, a little. OK, I think redoing this, I would have definitely also grabbed this a little bit. So yeah. it looks like it's swaying a bit. Mm. But I still think there's something really cool about just the pendant turning around. Yes, that's really nice. Yeah, I think what we could do is so you know how it just loops back to that. So mm -hmm. maybe we can copy this, just copy the frames, add it to the end. After selection, mm -hmm. we're going to reverse them. Yes. And that way it's going to go back. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So it kind of goes back and forth a little bit. Oh, that's I love really this. cool. So we're going to save. Save Don't it. forget to save. I know. I, I'm really bad with my saving. I'll usually like go through and I'll do the whole thing. And I'm like, wait, save. I know. <laughs> And there's that moment of, oh, no, I could have lost exactly, everything. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I say a quick, you know, oh, I'm grateful I didn't lose anything and then move on. But I haven't I haven't learned from that habit. That habit hasn't stopped yet. Uh, hey, but um, I, I I always notice that when I have to, if it ends up happening and I lose mm -hmm. the file and I have to redo it, I become more efficient. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. All right. You're saving for web. We're going to do um, 1080. 1080 is a sweet, sweet number. Hmm, doesn't seem to be a complete mm. square, which is okay. And we're going to save it as stop motion number two. Mm -hmm. I'm so creative with the names. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Give it a second to load on here. Where did I go? This is so exciting. I'm really going to find ways. I do a lot of, I don't do any like flat lays, but I do a lot of just portrait projects. And so like, like you mentioned before, when you said you do a lot of, you used to shoot a lot of fitness and 
um, yoga teachers, yoga instructors, finding ways that I can incorporate stop motion in my work is probably a, a task that I would give myself for the summer because I just really love the just the different ways you can display your work. This is really dope. Yeah, um, I, I get a tripod and just start shooting and, you're, yep. and it'll look amazing. It looks so cool. Uh, um, yeah. It's exactly what we did here. And kind of love that. That's really trippy, but mm -hmm. so cool. I do. I'm glad we kept it white. I'm glad we yes. didn't turn into red because I, I think, think it would have so. looked, I think it would have been too dark for yep. my aesthetics. Mm -hmm. and this right. is still very bright, very light and airy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And still I like next to the other the other image that we did as well it still kind of keeps the whole theme but I, I really like that we kept it white yeah this is my favorite image from the series all right so I'm gonna close everything we have Save. A, let me see there's a question here yes what's up so Peggy said it is so it's so therapeutic to watch you work and lots of good nuggets thank you Winnie here <laughs> Curious about any pro tips for creating realistic shadows. I am new to Photoshop and having a hard time with that. Creating realistic shadows, like in with lighting or so, in post-production? That's a good question. So Peggy, do you mean um, in your lighting or do you mean in post-production? Yeah. And then we can pick up, once they respond, then we can pick up from there. Oh, this uh, is a beautiful image. Thank you. What's, we how, how did this a, come to life? Well, there's a there's a lot going on here. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna start from the beginning. Yeah. My whole thought, my whole saga, <laughs> my whole saga. But um, one thing, um, Charlotte and I were thinking about. Uh, what, what first things first, I really wanted to highlight like red envelopes mm -hmm. because they're really important in um, Chinese weddings. It's a sign of elders. Mm -hmm. um, normally, you would have like a tea ceremony. We didn't do a tea ceremony. Mm -hmm. And you respect your elders. You give them tea. And they give you red envelope as a mm -hmm. congratulations, you're married, and good luck. Here's some money. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so I wanted to highlight that. It's really, it's, um, really important. Um, and it's good luck. Red is good luck. That's why there's mm -hmm. so much red in this photo series. And I asked uh, Charlotte, I was like, I really want to recreate something this, but I want to make it modern. I want to create that like mm -hmm. commercial still life look that I adore, but I don't want to do, I, I wanted to create depth. You know, mm -hmm. I want, I didn't want to just put on a pedestal. I wanted to create layers so that it feels like there's, um, it, it, you know, we're playing with shadows. We're playing yeah. with a bit of light. So we started here. And then I was like, no, I don't like that it's leaning. Mm -hmm. I don't like that it's like, I don't like the red. I felt like the red is the red is beautiful, but the red mm -hmm. is too dark for my mm -hmm. aesthetic. So we kind of leaned into, let's add more yellow into it. And I was like, okay, let's do that. Let's add more yellow. <laughs> also lighting screw up here. That's okay, because we adjusted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we started just adding pieces left and right a little bit. And, wow. and we'll put it, and so as you can tell, Charlotte would kind of like uh, put it on the corner. She's mm -hmm. like, how does this look? And I was like, I love it. I love how abstract mm -hmm. it looks. I love what I love what it's doing is it's framing the center yes, yes. of the red envelope. The focus is there. So we're just kind of like framing everything here. We're just adding more layers, more and more layers. <laughs> oh, I love you know, so we're adding some layers behind, we're adding some layers forward, so it creates that foreground contrast to it. Mm -hmm. And just adding the little pieces, and we ended up here. Here was the uh, happy place. And uh, we're going to crop it again. I'm going to crop it to center. There's actually a couple of things going on. It's slanted, and I'm going to crop it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. And then while you do that, Peggy did respond um, So the question about any pro tips uh, for creating realistic shadows is in regards to lighting. Yeah, I I think um, realistic shadows. There, I think it depends on the look you're going for. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a something that feels more natural, like natural sunset lighting, mm -hmm. creating that glow that everyone really loves, um, you want to take the light and move it further back. Hmm. So that it's oh, so that I think Further a lot of times, away. exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of times when I first started product photography, everything was close. Mm -hmm. 
the lighting was right next to the set and I was like, the lighting has to be closer. It doesn't yeah. light everything. No, the reality is you can take it a step forward and it creates that longer shadows for that summer look. And then if you want it to just create like a really harsh shadow, you want mm -hmm. to have more, you want to add a reflector so that it's all channeling. You want to add a grid so that everything's channeling into one specific area. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Tips there, tips there. What <laughs> I think the main thing is don't, you you need it as a bearable. Yep. You can't add a modifier or diffuser because you lose all the shadows. Yep, exactly. All right, here we go. Becky, I hope that answered your question. I actually might crop it a little differently. I might crop it four or five. Ooh, we'll four do five. it the long way. Yes. Because you want to capture all of that. Yep. Yeah. I'm happy with it right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Adore. It's perfect. And same thing as did before. Sync and synchronize. Awesome. And we are actually getting close to, we have probably about five more minutes or so left. No, oh, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll just give like a gist of what I will do. Yes, that, that'll be good. Yeah, what I'll do here is uh, clean up the image like we always do. Mm -hmm. We're going to change the red, we're going to change the yellows. Um, the additional composite that I would have done is you can kind of tell that um, in this character, that's actually my last name, Lau, um, mm. or Liu. And what we'll do here is you can tell there's it's a bit dirty. It's a, a it's it's catching the reflection of the camera, mm -hmm. which is why it has um, all these dark spots. So when mm -hmm. working with reflections, we always want to just grab a couple plates. So here, mm -hmm. uh, I grabbed a foam board on the bottom and I just kind of brighten it up, and you know you can tell that the red envelope looks brighter, and mm -hmm. um, still a bit of dark spots here, but uh, but here it's like more well lit. Same thing. I did it closer. There we go. And now it's like completely the whiteboard is right mm -hmm. here. The foam board, whatever you have, we have foam boards in the studio. So we pop mm -hmm. that over creating just a beautiful lighting reflection right there. So it's catching the light that's right in front of us right there. Okay. And that's, and what I'll do is layer it and I'll composite it and create ideally something like this, but as a full image. I think also what I will do in Photoshop as well, too, is you can kind of tell Charlotte did a lot of scissors cutting here. And because it's not as clean in Photoshop, I'll create the curves along the lines oh. and just clean the edges a little more just so that they're a little sharper. So they look a little more animated than they mm -hmm. look um, than, than looking as if it's like, you know, someone cutting it. Absolutely. Um, what else will I do? Let's see. Yeah, and, and I love how there's so much depth to this mm -hmm. image um, versus like what we started with, which was um, here. <laughs> yeah, no depth I, at all. <laughs> I love that you guys um, just kind of added and played along with um, all the different pieces and just was like, does this look right? Okay, yes, no. And just kind of building upon until you get to your happy spot. Yeah. I think that's really important to just give yourself kind of grace and give yourself time to just figure out what you do and do not like and and, and try to land in the place yeah. that you, you feel satisfied with. Yeah, and it's a very collaborative effort. It's a yes. conversation amongst three of us um, about what we're looking for, how to adjust mm -hmm. it a little bit. And so, it, it, and oops, did not mean to do that. Control Z. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it comes from a collaborative point of view and, and adjusting as we kind of go. Absolutely. And yeah, but... So, so much we learned today. I, yes, I, so much we learned today. And we do have a, an extra minute or so. Can you show us, just for those that may have just joined the live, the two full projects that we were able to complete so they can yeah. see what we were able to do. And then that way they have a reason to go back. I mean, you definitely should go back and watch the whole live, but in case <laughs> you need a reason to. Well, here but we did a stop motion can't get any closer but you know we create a gif of just a pendant swinging around uh we went into photoshop to adjust the colors um mm -hmm. and use timeline on photoshop to create that uh stop motion here and the other thing we did was another stop motion which is a 
um, just showcasing different layers and how to do a before and after Mm -hmm. and a fun way to kind of showcase that. And here we're just highlighting a concept of a handwritten draft into a final product. That's really what we used it for. I love, I love, I love. And then when it, the entire project that you put together, is it live yet? Are you going to be putting it out there just in case anyone wants to look out for this personal project coming? Yeah. Out? Yeah. I mean, I'm editing live with everyone. So as now that we finished these two person project, I'll clean up the last project um, and I will post it on my Instagram, my portfolio. Um, I don't know, maybe for once I'll write a blog. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I really I want to talk about it just like we did today. Yeah. Um, so that more people can kind of enjoy my uh personal project. Awesome. Well, oh, this was so incredible. Wendy, thank you so much for everything that you did today for taking us through your whole creative process. Truly, truly appreciative. I hope that y'all loved and learned a bit. I know that I took some different aspects of today's live and I'm putting some different tools into my toolbox. So I hope that you feel encouraged to do the same. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go back and rewatch the live um, on Behance or on YouTube. So that way you can kind of watch the entire process again. Um, And then thank you so much, Sam, for dropping Winnie's Instagram as well. So go ahead and give her a follow on Instagram. Awesome. So thank y'all so much um, for joining us today. Make sure you stay tuned and join Ari and Ben for the Adobe Font Show, which is coming up next. And until then, we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye, everyone.